All right, we're back. You guys probably seen this from the other video. Kind of taking everything off it and gonna try and get this going again. I've also got the hands-free microphone today because it's windy as hell, so the sound might be a little bit weird, but at least you want to get the wind noise. This is a Merida Albon Tech aluminum tubing with uh, steel lugs. Got this Sally Master Saddle, nice and comfy. No brakes, got uh, X-Age Motion rear mac. Still looking pretty good. New chain here and S-Works cranks. Got the STX parallel hubs, front and rear. And yeah, that's basically it. We'll try and get, get it going again. I gotta put some forks on. Uh, it's got the shifter, thumb shifter, and then also the Avid, Avid brake levers, you can see there. So yeah, I'm not sure about bars yet, but I'll see what I can find. Hopefully I can get everything back together, get this rolling at least. And it should be a, a nice, fun spare bike. So I found these forks and these uh, RockShox Indies, I think. I'm not sure what model it is, but uh, I think they're like an early model of RockShox, just a basic one. But good thing is the threads are good here. Check the threads, they're good. And then I took a look inside and you can see that the, the Lastimers are pretty, uh, pretty good. They're not uh, frozen. Fresh here. Aesthetically, not that good looking, but this is gonna be a pretty rat, rat bike, but at least happy with the internals. I'm gonna try to clean it up a bit, grease up the inside, grease up the stanchions a little bit, get the rust off here, and then chuck it on. And it should, uh, should go pretty well. Yeah, so you can see the last ones are in pretty good condition and you know, they flex pretty well. They weren't uh, dried out or anything like that. Sometimes you can buy forks where the, the forks kind of like seized in there and the elastomers have been melted on the inside. Uh, yeah, this makes it super hard to kind of get the legs off. And what you need to do is kind of heat it up, heat it up and try and get it off that way. But yeah, I usually, uh, <laughs> I usually try not to bother with those. Um, and then here I'm just cleaning up the stanchions, adding a little bit of a uh, grease on there just to make it nice and smooth. The reason why I didn't take the legs off is because you need a super long Allen key tool. I think it's a five mil, I could be wrong, but it's a long Allen key tool that goes inside the leg and I, I didn't have that. So I just basically did what I can. And I think this, yeah, this made it way smoother as well anyway. Um, here just cutting off the little excess from the molding. Uh, I think it's just how the boots were formed, but it was kind of bugging me a little bit, so I had to give them a little little trim. And then, yeah, just cleaning up the legs with a little bit of D40 and a nylon brush here. Again, with the legs, it was, uh, the outside of the paint is corroded, so I didn't bother spending, like, tons of time cleaning them. Just gave them a, gave them a once over. They're not going to be perfect, but at least the stanchions are in good condition and the internals are in good condition, so... Uh, everything's working on the inside, which is good. And then here, just cleaning up the little uh, end caps, I guess you call them, and just greasing them up. These are just plastic, so make sure you don't tighten them too hard. Just tighten them to this snug. And then, yeah, putting the, the fork brace back on. Just alter alternate the uh, bolts. And you can see how windy it was out here. Yeah, it's kind of getting crazy. But um, yeah, I was trying to get what I could do today anyway. But yeah, put everything back on and it was uh, looking pretty sweet and ready to install. All right, here's the Fox, all serviced. Looking pretty sweet. I think they're ready to go on. This is how they work. They were actually stiffer than I thought, which is pretty good. If you don't know how to work these, pretty simple. Basically, if you want it tighter, tighter suspension, like more stiff, you just wind this down clockwise and it'll push like a little plastic thing that pushes on the elastomer to make it tighter. And then you just do it anti-clockwise for it to be a little bit springy. But yeah, that's basically it. All right, so just sorting out a headset here. Kind of windy too. I think I'm gonna put the old one on the diamond back that I took apart. So yeah, these bearings, I don't know, for some reason they look slightly different, different size. So what I decided to do is I'm just gonna put new bearings in this little cage here, clean this out, put new bearings in the cage, and then use this headset. I'm gonna clean uh, this little spray paint off. So yeah, just basically just tapped all the bearings out and gave it a scrub. Um, so yeah, previously sprayed the, the headset cup with the frame on the old diamond back, and some of the paint came off pretty easily, but then some of the other paint was like really hard to get off. 
So yeah, probably a testament to the sprayed up bike paint. Um, but eventually I got it off using a wire brush and then he's cleaning out the race, replacing some of the bearings that I had in there, grease it up. Um, yeah, basically just put grease in there so all the bearings would stick. But it ended up being uh, pretty straightforward. I had one extra bearing left, so yeah, lucked out on that one. All right, these are all clean. I also cleaned this little insert bit and then used a lock nut and then just installing it using a DIY uh, headset installer. Just uh, bits from hardware store. I'm sure you could work it out. So yeah, just putting a little bit of grease in the cups here, uh, just in case I need to take it out again. But yeah, I tend to do this with headsets because they're in there pretty tight. And then when you're using this tool, just make sure your cups are on straight. So you just wind it slowly and every, every couple of winds, just make sure your headset cups are going straight and just do that all the way around. Yeah, no need to rush it. You'll, you'll get there and you don't have to do it up super tight. Just do it up until it's snug and then it should be good. And then here's a little tip. If your headset gets loose all the time, just use two wrenches and tighten them against each other. Uh, it takes a little bit to get the right pressure on the bearings, but um, yeah, after a while you'll get it. And here just chucking the wheel on, everything fit. Here putting in a stem converter. You're probably wondering why I put a threaded headset in and put a stem converter in there. Probably a bit redundant here, but what can you do? That's all I had. And then here just chucking on this stem. Shout out Bike Dad. This old yoga stem. Pretty cool, pretty short stack. And yeah, it looks pretty good as well. Make sure you just alternate the bolts on the stem. The bars are moth bars by Magic Components, shout out Crumbworks. I did actually try a different bunch of stem and bar setups, but um, this one I want to try the most, so we'll see how it goes. Alright, these arms looking pretty good. I think one thing, we'll see how it turns, because it's quite short. See how if it hits the knees or not. But yeah, I think it's going to ride pretty fun. Alright, just put the brakes on, I just slid them on. I don't know if you need to see that, just slide them on. For at the moment, I do have the left going to the back. I usually like the uh, right going to the back, so I'll switch that around. But this is just to see kind of how it's going to set up. It should be uh, quite fun, I think, just because the bars are back. I made this quite low because I think the shocks make it a little bit higher. So I think you still get a bit of control with the handling, so it's not up too high. And then also, brings the bars in a little bit. I would say this frame is probably just one size bigger than what I usually ride, but it still fits. And I think bringing it back will make it quite fun as well. Just, uh, yeah, make the handling a little bit more kind of cruisy and more, more, more control. The one thing I'm gonna have to do is, I think I'm gonna have to cut a new cable or at least new housing for this. So try and bring it out a bit because I think it's a little bit short here. Uh, I'm going to do that and then we'll see how this front brake goes once I put the brakes on as well But yeah, things looking good So yeah, sometimes I reuse my cable ends I just pull them off a pair of pliers and then just make sure there's a hole using a sharpened spoke Obviously, it's a bit too mangled. Don't worry about it. And then with these metal shifters I like to protect the bars. You just use an old tube. I think this is an old 700 tube and you just cut the width of the shifter and then just, yeah, turn it inside out and slide it on onto the bar. And then that way you can minimize the scratching of these kind of old metal clamps. You can also file the, some of the corners down to make it a little bit smoother. But yeah, that works pretty well. And then here, just testing the shifter to make sure it's a good fit. It was actually too low on the bar, so I decided to redo it. Here you can see I'm filing some of the corners off. I redid it and put the shifter in front of the brake and I thought that worked a lot better for your hand. And then here it is from the top. You can see it just clears the brake clamp. So that worked out pretty well. You can see I can access both pretty easily as well. And then with the grips, some of the grips come with little ridges. Um, I put the ridges closer to the brake lever because I feel like that's where you're going to get more kind of twisting. But yeah, these grips I decided just to put on dry. I just used four long zip ties and uh, yeah, just put it on and then pulled the zip ties out. It actually took like way more effort than I thought. Um, but yeah, depending on your grips, sometimes it's easy just to use a little bit of water. But I, yeah, I just wanted to see 
how difficult it would be just to put them on dry, but yeah, didn't end up being too bad. And then I just had to cut some new housing for the shifter cable just because these bars are a little bit longer than my previous ones. And um, just make sure your shifter is all the way at zero before you connect it so you don't get uh, fake tension. All right, you can see this is uh, super close, almost there. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit off this to let the cable go. I think I made this a little bit long anyway. So yeah, basically with all my bikes now, I cut my brake cables and shifter cables and housing all a little bit longer because I know eventually I'd be uh, switching out stuff on my bikes. So yeah, that's a good tip if you're working on a lot of bikes. Um, have that little bit extra just in case and then here you can see I'm putting the re putting the cable end back on All right, checking on the brakes. I just had these brakes um, I can't remember where these are from but they're just generic. I don't think they even have a brand but uh, <laughs> I think they're gonna they're gonna work for what I need and then I just want to give them a big brush up on the drill press nothing uh, nothing crazy, but just taking all the just a I don't know if it's corrosion or just a little bit of wear on the on the faces and yeah just give them a quick brush up using this drill bit it's kind of like a brush drill bit with a little bit of sandpaper in there but then i ripped all the sandpaper out and then i did the bolts as well but yeah just a quick freshen up be careful not to get the pads because you don't want grime on the pads when you do it and then here just putting on the brakes just a little bit of grease and yeah just screw them on i used the middle hole for this one but i think if you have really cheap brakes, try to use the hole with more tension. I think that sometimes that helps. In installing brakes, I just wind out this barrel adjuster so it's like seven, showing seven threads. And then what this will allow, give you a little bit of slack later after you finish setting up your brakes. So after you do that, basically connect the cable and then line up your pads and pull everything tight so it's tight against the rim. Here you can see the housing was a little bit long and it didn't fit with this uh, noodle type. This noodle is more than nine degrees. So I tried putting it on the side. It seemed like it would work a little bit better, but uh, I ended up deciding to just cut the cable a bit short. You can see here I measure it. It's about uh, an inch. Oh yeah, like 20, 25 centimeters, 25 millimeters. But yeah, I always cut less just in case I need to cut more and then here using a spoke tool to clear the cable. And then I end up cutting about half of what I measured and it ended up working pretty well. So I kind of just left it as is. And yeah, here you just put the pads up against the rim, do it up tight. And then you go back to the barrel adjuster and wind it in. And then it should uh, clear the wheel. Basically it should clear the wheel if your wheels are straight and then you can use that little adjuster and screw to kind of pull the brakes over if it's pulling over on one side. Um, but yeah, that was working good. So tuck that cable in, give it a snip, and then same thing for the front. So yeah, basically line up, line up the pads, make sure they're sitting nice. And then here I had to cut new cable housing again. So make sure you press your brakes uh, together before you try to measure, because that will give you a uh, more accurate measurement. Um, so yeah, basically I just had to cut a little bit more, maybe like 80 millimeters, but yeah, I just did it up. And then I ended up setting up this whole brake and then I realized it didn't, wasn't really working. All right, you can see sometimes uh, the brake pads might not work as well because the, the wheel isn't dished. So you can see the gap is smaller here and it's bigger to the right. So I'm just going to tighten the spokes. Just tighten the spokes on this side. And if you squeeze this side, it's going to pull the rim over this way. Yeah, here's me uh, dishing the wheel. It's funny, like, I don't usually show this, but I thought I'd film it this time to see, <laughs> show you guys how, how it is. Not really that interesting, but <laughs> it's in there nonetheless. Um, but yeah, I got it pretty dished and then the back was working as well. So you can see the back's working nicely. And then chucking on these Rob Warner Bear Trap pedals. Uh, yeah, usually I take them off when I work on bikes just so you're not kind of clanging them around. <laughs> but yeah, that was the last thing. And here's the bike.
yeah, super stoked with how the handling of the bike turned out. Uh, just with the wide bars, short stem, and kind of low height made it real comfortable, real stable. The Fox felt really good. Uh, I didn't really notice it that much actually, just riding around. I think because my weight was further back and also I think it must have been pretty stiff as well. I did put it under a lower setting, which was the softer setting. But yeah, I rode it downstairs and stuff and yeah, didn't feel it uh, bottom out or have any noise at all. So pretty stoked on that. I'm sure the wide bars and big volume tires also helped with that as well. And yeah, all in all, pretty stoked how it turned out. I uh, hope you guys liked the vid. Thanks for watching. Thank you for all the support. And I will catch you in the next vid. Peace.